Hello and welcome to Become the Teapot. I'm Ian. And so am I. It is August 2021 and we are recording a podcast about comic books and their film adaptations. In two weeks the episode will be released. You are listening to it now. 24 episodes, 24 hours in a day. Coincidence? Yes. In 30 seconds time the intro music is playing. Afterwards we discuss Watchmen from the year 2009 and compare it to the comic book of the same name by writer Alan Moore and artist Dave Gibbons. But first, we introduce our guest, Chrissy, a friend of ours. What will she think? We will find out. Then, Ian will say something about eggs. The future is unclear on that. Strange. Before that, though, the music. Three seconds now. Two seconds. One. Alan Moore, as, as we all know, is very anti-Hollywood, I think would probably be fair to say. You see what those bloody corporations do? They take your ideas and they suck them. Suck them like leeches until they've gotten every last drop of the marrow from your bones. Like, his name's not on the movie. He, he said, I never want this adapted. Yep. Um, and I watched this documentary once that said, he essentially said, I have made Watchmen, maybe not intentionally, but Watchmen is unfilmable. And I think reading the comic and then immediately watching the film afterwards, not only does it make the film worse because you just realise just how much the film misses the point, <laughs> but you kind of realise that the kind of genius, I think, of using the comic book medium to its full extent to tell such an incredible story. And then it just cannot be translated into film as much as Zack Snyder would like to try. And <laughs> because of that, it's just, I feel, is not good. Is not a good film. No, I, I absolutely agree with that. It's the pacing of the film is all over the place. And that is because it's tried, all it's tried to do, apart from a few changes, is replicate the comic book. And the comic book, you know, Alan Moore and Dave Gibbons have said they've used every trick in comic book storytelling to tell that story. Mm. And so if all you're doing is taking page to screen and saying, right, well, let's take this scene and put that on the screen and the same pacing throughout, it just is never going to work. You need to actually adapt it if you're going to change it into a film. I, I think there are one or two really good sequences in the film and they tend to be where the film has actually used film techniques to tell the story you know things that you couldn't do in the comic book the comic for instance uses excerpts and clippings from books and newspapers at the end of each chapter mm -hmm. to tell the history of the Minutemen and the crime busters the film obviously couldn't do this so instead we get that really good montage at the beginning set to Bob Dylan's Times They Are a Changing yep. which for me is actually a really good sequence in a, in a sort of bleak and rubbish film <laughs> it's a very interesting sequence where he just does a two minute opening montage that reflects the history and you learn a lot about that that's not in the comic books it's only for the film and I think if the film had taken more liberties with how the story is told and focus mm -hmm. more on conveying the themes of the comic book and less time slavishly replicating just the aesthetics, I think it would have been a better film. Yeah, there are things that you obviously learn in the stories in between the chapters. Hmm. Like, is it um, Cashman? <laughs> Whatever that guy's name is. Dollar, Dollar Bill. Bill. <laughs> Thank you. Um, he gets his cape trapped in the door, which I thought I wouldn't have known that if I'd not read the little story bits in between. Because mm. I, I even actually sent you a text and said, are we reading this? Does your book have that? And you went, yeah. I went, oh, okay. I just thought it was in my special version. Your special version. <laughs> You've got a very standard version of the comic book as far as I can tell. Well, I didn't know if it was a special version. <laughs> Zack Snyder's gonna Zack Snyder, isn't he? You know, there's not really much you can do about that. 